Good morning. I'm Dr. Sneha, first year postgraduate from general surgery. So today we'll be seeing about the translation. So the outline would be introduction, indications for blood transfusion, types of blood transfusion, donation and collection, and administration of blood. So blood is a familiar red fluid in the body that contains white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, proteins, and other elements. So each part of blood has specific special functions and can be separated from each other. So the blood components would be whole blood, packed cell, platelets, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, protein solution, factor concentrate, and granulocyte concentration. So blood transfusion is the injection of a volume of blood obtained from the healthy person, that is the donor, into the circulation of the patient, that is the recipient, whose blood is deficit in quantity or in quality. So the donated blood is usually subjected to processing after it is collected, and it is separated into blood components by centrifugation. So indications of blood transfusion. So let's see the indications of different components of blood and its transfusion. First, indications of whole blood transfusion. In cases of hemorrhage, like when there is a blood loss of 25% or more, then in those cases we require whole blood transfusion. And in cases of where patients undergoing exchange transfusion, in cases where patients who continue to bleed after receiving four units of PRBCs, indications of packed cell transfusion. The blood is centrifuged at 3000 REVs per minute and the supernated plasma is removed. So one unit of packed cell increases the level of the hemoglobin by one gram per deciliter and it increases the hematocrit by 3%. So packs, pack red cells are used when the whole blood may cause overload to the circulation, like in cases where there's symptomatic chronic anemia without hemorrhage, in acute sickle cell crisis, in cardiac failure, and in blood loss where there's 30% of or more of blood loss, and also in perioperative anemia. So the indications of uh, platelet-rich plasma. Uh, sorry, so indications of platelet transfusion. It is a precipitate after platelet-rich plasma is centrifuged at 3000 REV per minute. And platelet-rich plasma is the supernatant plasma after whole blood is centrifuged, a thousand REV per minute. So patients with thrombocytopenia or platelet function defect and correction of coagulopathy if platelets is low and in a prophylactic transfusion, example in case of major surgery or invasive procedures or ocular surgery or neurosurgery and uh, in surgeries where there's active bleed, so these are the indications for transfusion of platelets. What would be the contraindication for platelets transfusion? Like thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and in case of heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So moving on to the indication of fresh frozen plasma. It is a supernatant liquid portion when fresh blood is centrifuged at 3000 REVs per minute. The supernatant liquid rapidly frozen by immersion in a mixture of carbon dioxide, ethyl alcohol within eight hours of collection. 
So this fresh frozen plasma is indicated only when the other means of correction of the deficiencies are not available. So the indications of transfusion of fresh frozen plasma would be cases where there's deficiency of coagulation factors or inhibitors of coagulation and in emergency treatment of warfare and overdosage and vitamin K deficiency, treatment of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and treatment of disseminated intravascular coagulation. So moving on to the next slide. The indications of transfusion of cryoprecipitate. It is a precipitate when the fresh frozen plasma is allowed at to thaw at four degrees Celsius and the supernatant plasma is removed. So this is rich in factor eight five, uh, and one valibrance factor, etc. So this is indicated in the following conditions like hemophilia, one valibrance disease, disseminated intravascular coagulation, hepatic failure, and in surgical bleeding, and also in congenital fibrinogen deficiency. So the indications for transfusion of protein solution. So human plasma protein fraction, example, albumin concentrate, immune and hyperimmune globulins, and antithrombin 3, and protein concentrate. It is indicated in following conditions like hypoalbuminemia, patients undergoing plasma pheresis, patients with nephrotic syndrome, and liver failure. So what are the indications for transfusion of, of granulocyte concentration? So these are prepared as buffy pores or no blood cell separators from normal. Donor, from normal donor or from patients with severe myeloid leukemia. They have been used in uh, patients with severe neutropenia. Indications for transfusion of factor concentrate. Example, factor eight, factor nine prothrombin complex, protein C, fibrinogen concentrates and recombinant factor. So the indications for the transfusion of factor concentrate would be Cases like hemophilia A, one valibrance disease, factor eight concentrate. So one valibrance disease, like you would require factor eight concentrate. Other indications would be Christmas disease, liver disease, severe sepsis with disseminated intravascular coagulation. So let's see about the type of blood transfusion. So we have two types, that is the allogenic or autologous. Allogenic blood transfusion is the transfusion of blood originating from donor of the same species as the recipient. While autologous blood transfusion, it is the collection and subsequent infusion of the patient's own blood. So the types of autologous blood transfusion would be Preoperative autologous blood donation, acute isovolemic hemodilution, intraoperative blood salvage, postoperative blood salvage. So, the donation and collection. Characteristics of donation blood collection in surgery, and the effects of storage of blood. We'll be seeing about all this. And administration of blood, patient investigation, ABO and RH grouping. So blood donation. In case of blood donation, there should be voluntary activity, whole blood, specific components should be looked for and donor selections donor should be between 18 to 65 years and they should be over 51 kgs in weight and the fitness criteria would be hemoglobin not less than 12 gram per deciliter no major operation in last six months 
no blood donation in past six months and uh, no blood transfusion within last 12 months and no pregnancy within last 12 months. There should be no clinical malaria in the past one month, free from severe hypertension, splenomegaly and hepatomegaly. So you should make sure that the person who's donating blood uh, has all this, uh, like follows all this fitness criteria. He should also be checked for hypertension, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, bleeding disorders, and allergic conditions like asthma. If he has any of these thing, one any of these things, he should not be donating blood. So free, uh, free of history and clinical. So there should be no history of the donor being a carrier of viral hepatitis, HIV infection, syphilis, trypanosomiasis, and brucellosis. And the donor should not be vaccinated within the last three weeks of the trans blood donation and must not belong to any of the risk groups for HIV infection, example, she should not be homosexual, IV drug, drug abusers, and prostitute or their clients. So the collection of blood. Collection of blood should be done under strict asepsis into a sterile plastic bag that contains 60 ml of citrate phosphate dextrose, CPD, as anticoagulant and preservative. So CPD keeps the red cell viable for 21 days in vitro. Use of CPDA, that is adenine enriched CPDA. So CPDA is A is for adenine and CPD is citrate phosphate dextrose. So use of the CPDA1 extends the shelf life to 35 days. So it is collected in a glass bottle. The plastic bag is labeled and stored as early as possible in a special bank refrigerator at two to six degrees Celsius. Afterwards, the FFG tests are done on donor blood and collected into separate containers, ABO and RH grouping serological test for syphilis, HPSAG, HGLV1, and HIV, HIV, and hepatitis B, core antibody, pick content pill of malaria parasite. So this is the way that the blood, blood collection from the donor should be made. Assemble the equipments first, and then perform the hand hygiene and then uh, identify and prepare the donor. Ask the donor to state his full name, label blood collection bag and test tubes. Ensure that the blood collection bag is of the correct type and the labels on the blood collection bag and the satellite bag and the sample tubes and donor tubes have the correct patient's name and number and then palpate the area, locate a vein of good size and it is visible straight and clear. And then the vein should be visible without applying the tonic. Later, you can apply the tonic and the blood pressure cuff should be inserted to 40 to 60 mm Hg. Ask the donor, to form a fist so that the veins are more prominent. Put on well-fitting non-sterile glove. So these are the basic things we should, which is supposed to be done before blood is being collected. And then perform venipuncture, keep monitoring the patient, 
look for changes in the blood flow that may indicate the needle has moved into the vein and needs to be repositioned. Mix the collected blood gently with the anticoagulant. And then care, there's something which you, sh which you should do for the donor after the donation, like ask the donor to remain in the chair and relax for a few minutes after the donation is done. Inspect the site of blood. If it is not bleeding, apply a bandage to the site. If it is bleeding, apply further pressure. Before the donor leaves the donation room, ensure that the person can stand up without dizziness and without drop in blood pressure. Offer the donor refreshments. Ensure the blood unit and the sample. So, uh, and also ensure that the blood unit and the samples are stored and delivered appropriately. So, uh, so the effects of storage of blood. So fresh blood, it is the blood used within three hours of collection. And it has all its constituents preserved, like platelets, mucosides, factor five, factor eight, and all are active. However, when the blood is stored at two to six degrees Celsius, the changes can occur within time. For example, in red cells, they swell by about 20% and lose the potassium gradually to the plasma. And the ATP and two comma three DPG fall it is uh, diminished viability of cells. About 1% of cells are lost for every day of storage. So the leukocytes, they are not viable after 24 hours of storage. Even fresh leukocytes survive only for 30 to 90 minutes after the blood is stored. So the platelets. There are no viable platelets after 24 hours of storage of blood, although non-viable remains for two weeks. So moving on to electrolytes, potassium diffuses out of the cell and the plasma potassium rises at the rate of one millimole per day. Sodium concentration of the plasma is increased because of the sodium citrate in the CPD anticoagulant and calcium. There is no ionized calcium because uh, ionized calcium displaces the sodium in disodium citrate, forming an unionized calcium citrate. So looking at the plotting factors, factor five and factor eight declines rapidly, while factor seven declines only after 14 days. Factor nine declines rapidly after seven days, and there is no activity after 14 days. Factor 10 loses its activity after seven days. Fibrinogen and factor 11 are stable for around 21 days. So the pH, lactic concentration rises from continuing red cell glycosis. pH falls from 7.2 at the time of collection to about 6.8 at 20th day. Plasma Hb level rises during storage due to leakage from the cells. Ammonia concentration also rises. Administration, for example, we should look at, uh, at patients' investigations like ABO grouping, RH grouping for the presence of D antigen positive in 95% Africans, like 95% of the Afri Africans, there's presence of D antigen. So we should look for that. And uh, those without the D antigen may develop antibodies to it if they are transfused with D positive blood or carry the D positive fetus. So cross matching should be performed. That is ABO and RH compatible blood should always be cross matched with the recipient serum before use to avoid serious adverse antigen antibody reaction of incompatibility. So the administration and rate. Blood to be transfused should be identified and checked 
against the recipient's name, group, hospital number, and the ward. The drip is set up under strict asepsis using 17 gauge or large needle. So the rate should initially be 20 to 30 drops per minute. That is like uh, 2 to 3 ml per minute. It increases after half an hour to 60 to 80 drops per minute. If there is a blood loss, the rate of transfusion should be rapid, squeezing the bag containing the blood if necessary. And in elderly and in very young, the rate should be slow at around 40 drops or less per minute. The patient's general condition, pulse, and the BP should be monitored throughout. So the patient's general condition, like pulse and BP, should be monitored throughout the blood transfusion. So what would be the complications of blood transfusion? Complications of blood transfusion is divided into immediate reactions and delayed reactions. So immediate reactions, you have febrile non-hemolytic reaction. Febrile non-hemolytic reaction, the definition is incompatibility between antigen on the WBC and the antibodies in the recipient plasma causes previous transmission or pregnancies, endotoxins or py pyrogens in the blood in the transfusion set or blood. Features, rigors and fever, nausea and vomiting, management, temporary stoppage of transfusion. If severe, it is investigated to exclude a hemolytic reaction, septicemia or malaria. Mucoside de depleted blood products in future transfusion. And there can also be some allergic reaction to blood due to the allergens, usually the plasma proteins in the donor plasma. Symptoms would be urticaria, myalgia, arthralgia, bronchospasm, edema of the face. In severe cases, there can also be anaphylaxis, chest pain, hypotension, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, shock, and pyrexia. So these reactions are mediated by histamine and leukotrienes. Management, transfusion interrupted, antihistamine should be given, corticosteroids should be given, and IV adrenaline can be given in case of anaphylaxis. So hemolytic reactions. So hemolysis of donor cells if there are antibodies to them in the recipient plasma. So the hemolytic reactions and their clinical feature. Clinical features would be sensation of heat and pain along the vein, headache, rigor, fever, dyspnea, pain in the loin, shock, hemoglobinuria, jaundice, hypotension, oliguria to anuria. Hemolytic reaction management. So the blood should be stopped and the reminder and the patient's blood should be taken up for further grouping and cross-matching. Blood culture, laboratory information like hemoglobinemia, methyl albumin, bilirubin, saline susp suspension, diuresis, alkaline urine, shock correction, and reverse disseminated intravascular coagulation. It can also be bacterial contaminated. So about 2% of the blood bank is contaminated usually at the time of collection and septicemia or endotoxin shock may ensure when it is transfused. The contaminants include uh, cryophilic bacteria, pseudomonas and gram-negative bacteria. So how will the symptoms in case of bacterial contamination be? 
they can be chills, high fever, dry skin, hypertension, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. So the management is the drip should be stopped. Donor and the recipient blend is taken for culture, IV broad spectrum antibiotics, IV fluids, steroids, and vasopressors. So they can also be circulatory overload. It leads to pulmonary edema and congestive cardiac failure. To the symptoms, like it would be dyspnea, orthopnea, cough, cyanosis, frothy sputum, raised JVP, rails, rapid and weak pulse. So the treatment should be transfusion stopped and the patient in propped up position, IV, furosemide, lobotomy, and digitalization should be done. In case of cardiac arrest during the transfusion, it is more likely to occur in mass massive transfusion. Cold blood transfusions, sorry, cold blood transfuse rapidly, may cool the heart and precipitate the cardiac arrhythmias. So air embolism can occur. It is uncommon with the collapsible plastic bags, aspiration, as little as 10 ml may provoke fatal air embolism. Symptoms would be gasping respiration, cyanosis, venous congestion, hypotension, flashing noises over the heart. So the treatment should be oxygen administration, air aspiration from the heart. So uh, whatever we saw so far are the immediate reactions and talking about the delayed reaction, let's see what would be the delayed reaction. So it can be thrombophlebitis. It is more common in lower limb veins because of the immobility of legs. And the clinical features would be pain, redness, tenderness, and later thickening of the vein, pyrexia. So again, the treatment would be analgesics, send the blood for culture and sensitivity. So the other delayed hemolytic reactions can be mild jaundice, production of antibodies, hemolysis of red cells, So post-transfusion thrombocytopenic purpura is also a side effect Delay of uh, delayed reaction in case of blood transfusion. Treatment is uh, spontaneous prednisolone, IV immunoglobulin, plasma pheresis, So there can also be transmission of diseases like viral hepatitis, HBSAG, hepatitis C, B, D, and post-transfusional hepatitis. So the clinical features in those cases can be malaise, fever, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, jaundice, tender liver, tender enlarged liver, deepening in color of the urine and laboratory findings like elevated transaminases, serum bilirubin can be elevated, alkaline phosphatase, hepatitis B and D surface antibody can be found. And the management would be bed rest, alpha interferon, glucose drinks, low fat diet and vaccines. For example, if malaria is contaminate, like the patient gets malaria with the blood transfusion, the treatment should be chloroquine. And patient can also get syphilis, can be only transmitted in blood, which is used before 48 hours, as the spiral shades dies within 48 hours of storage. And in case of cytomegalo 
virus inf uh, infection, the features resemble those of the viral hepatitis, and it is likely that some recipients who develop joint receptor transfusion are in fact victims of this disease. So human immunodeficiency virus infection. Contaminants of blood and blood products. Other diseases include uh, trypanosomiasis, toxoplasmosis, brucellosis, and infectious mononucleosis. So the alternate to transfusion. These are the other options uh, of blood transfusion. Sometimes the blood substitute or patient's own blood is collected and reinfused subsequently to replace lost circulating volume. Reasons for alternate blood transfusion would be uh, religion, belief like Joave witness, never accept blood and its products for people who say like that and availability, like blood supply is limited or sometimes uh, is absent, mainly because of the absence of the healthy volunteer donors. And to avoid complications of transmission of diseases such as HIV, viral hepatitis, immunological complications of homologous transfusion such as alloimmunization and transfusion reactions. So there are the, uh, these are the techniques and methods for alternatives to blood transfusion. Autologous blood transfusion, blood substitutes like plasma substitute, RBC substitute, So as we saw previously, autologous transfusion is the collection and subsequent reinfusion of blood uh, of the patient's own blood. The types of autologous blood transfusion, we already saw that. So the types are explained here in detail. So this this can be, you'll just have to have some, it's more than enough if you'll remember the names of the types of the different transfusion. So let's go to the summary, like the blood transfusion or its product is an invaluable therapeutic measure, which should be with good reasons because of its potential hazards. Then loss, in, in a uh, should be uh, in during a surgical procedure should be minimized. RBC boosters should be given pre and post operatively to patients. So the concept of massive blood transfusion. What is the concept? What is massive blood transfusion? So the definition of massive blood transfusion is massive blood transfusion is defined as the replacement of one or more of the patient's blood volume within 24 hours of about five liter in an adult. So the indications would be patients undergoing exchange transfusions in order to restore blood volume in cases where there's sudden loss of more than 25% of the total blood volume, trauma, cardiovascular injuries such as cardiac bypass and valve replacements, spinal surgery, hepatic surgery, including transplants, obstetric surgeries. In all this condition there, it might require a massive blood transfusion. So what are the problems involved in massive blood transfusion? Technical and clerical errors, like these are more common when many units of blood are required urgently, thus hemolytic reactions are very more common in case of massive blood transfusion. There can also be circulatory overload in elderly and in debilitated patients. Rapid and excessive blood transfusion may overload the circulation and result in pulmonary edema or congestive cardiac failure. So arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. Many conditions acting singly or combined can cause cardiac arrest and arrhythmia. This include like hypokalemia, hypokalemia, hypothermia and acidosis. So most of the time it can also be electrolytes imbalance. 
so hyperkalemia as uh, storage of blood as the stored blood has a high potassium concentration large quantity infused may rapidly raise the potassium concentration of the recipient's plasma and it can precipitate cardiac arrhythmia so you should always remember that in case of massive blood transfusion potassium can be increased rapidly so you should always keep a check on the electrolyte level and you should think about cardiac arrhythmias be aware of thing when massive blood transfusion is preferred so hypocalcemia again the citrate ion in the anticoagulant of the back uh, bank blood combines with the ionized calcium of the recipient plasma causing hypocalcemia so this may potentiate the action of the hyper uh, calcemia and precipitate cardiac arrest so hypothermia if blood if cold blood is transfused it causes hypothermia which results in cardiac depression and again causing arrhythmia shivering may occur thereby increasing the oxygen demand so acidosis this can result from excessive citrate ions in the anticoagulant solution and the production of lactic acid by the red cells so the ph of the blood falls from about 7.2 to about 6.6 so this may also again cause uh, myocardial relaxation decrease contractility and predispose to ventricular fibrillation so there can also be bleeding diastasis there may be excessive uncontrollable bleeding during surgery due to thrombocytopenia bank blood contains no functioning platelets and the dil and it dilutes the recipient platelets so the deficiency of clotting factors like 5 and 8 in bank in bank blood so what would be the alternatives to blood transfusion alternatives to blood transfusion like we saw the patient's own blood can be collected and can be infused so that is an alternate so uh, the last slide so conclusion you should always remember what you should at the end of the day you should know what is the transfusion what is massive blood transfusion the complications of blood transfusion the immediate complications delayed complications and the ideal way to withdraw blood from the patient and uh, what are the things we you should which should be looked for before starting the blood transfusion like check for the blood banks uh, check for the patient's name and blood bank the blood group and everything should be looked for so that is the conclusion like the blood transfusion or its product is an in value uh, is an uh, in uh, valuable therapeutic measure which which should be with good reasons because of its potential hazards and blood loss in during a surgical procedure should be minimized rbc booster should be preferred pre and post operatively to the patients so thank you